So hey there everybody, as always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Rich, I'm the channel host, and normally we're talking about building our small and medium-sized drone businesses. Now I wanna jump right into this one today. I had a contact from one of our Patreon members just a couple of days ago. They're getting ready to do a new project and they're gonna be using Web ODM for outputting uh, some of their deliverables for the client. Specifically, their customer is looking for before and after images, before and after ortho mosaics of their property site that they're gonna be developing. And they're gonna want regular flights at that location and then regular outputs of ortho mosaics to show the time lapse, you know, as the build is going on. So he asked me quickly, he's still playing around with uh, WebODM. And by the way, if you're interested in WebODM, over at classes.azdrone.net, we do have a series on WebODM as well. His question was very specific. He was just looking to find out about the ortho mosaic, so just get things moving along quickly for him. So we did that, and let me just change the, uh, ch change the uh, screen here. All right, so the screen updated easily so that we can see all of it. So the interface that you're looking at right now is Web ODM. It is running off of my web browser and running off of my desktop station. I have a, a Mac Studio, and I use that for doing a lot of our uh, progression reports and 3D models, 2D models, and a lot of other things off of that, uh, off of the Mac Studio. So that's a great platform for us. If you're a Windows person, it's gonna look very similar as well because you're also going to be using um, your web browser for this. So to his question, he wants to go fly the location. After he's done with it, he's gonna process it in Web ODM, and he just wants to get those ortho mosaics. So right over here, upper left, solstice, October 6th. So we did that one just recently, and I wanted to do that for you um, so that you can see you know, the changes over a short period of time. So under the solstice, I am opening up the tasks. I am not, this is not a full tutorial on web ODM, okay? Um, once again, over at classes.azdrone.net, you can check out the full tutorial on that. So I'm gonna open up the task. And so it has, let's see here. It processed 210 photos for me and it did it in 42 minutes. And this was October 6th. Down below, we have a download assets. After this is completed, I can click on download assets. We've got ortho photo, surface model, point cloud, textured model, camera parameters, camera shots, a quality report, or all assets. In this case, he is just after the ortho photo. So I'm going to click on the ortho photo. And what's gonna happen now is it's going to download it to my downloads folder. So if I look at the downloads folder now, there it is, orthophoto.tiff. Now, every time it <laughs> exports these, it exports them with the same name. So I'm gonna do something to, uh, let me see here, uh, October 6th, whoops, 6th, ortho. There we go, so I've just relabeled it so it makes sense to me. Now, what we need to do is go to our other previous flight. So we've got one from July. I thought this, this would be really good because this is a big span. We actually fly this particular job twice a month. So we do have more of these models. But I'm gonna go down to tasks and I'm gonna open the task again. And once again, we have a download assets and there's that ortho photo again. All right, let's go ahead and grab that one. This is the July ortho photo. So we'll open our downloads once more and we'll relabel this one, July ortho. And there we go, so now we've got October and we've got July. So what are we gonna do next? Well, I am going to feed these into Photoshop just to show you. So we do custom web page presentations for our pr progression reporting clients. And in those web pages, we actually have the before and after orthos created from these large ortho TIFFs and we reduce them down to being a smaller JPEG so it fits on the website and people aren't trying to open a page with 139 or 142 megs. So let's just drag this on down and there's Photoshop waiting for us. And uh, let's see if that woke it up, it sure did. So Photoshop has opened up here and what we are looking at is one of the two ortho photos specifically I have this tab selected, October 6th ortho.tiff. First thing I'm going to do here is go over to layer. So here we go on the layer. And what I wanna do here 
uh, let me zoom myself out, is I want to label that October. Let's see if I can spell. And uh, I'm just going to leave it at October. It doesn't need any further labeling than that. And so there is one of our orthos. We have a second tab up here on the left. You see July ortho. So I'm going to click into that one now. And I'm going to go over to that layer again. And we're just going to label this July. And there we go. So now we have two tabs, July and October to deal with. And let me just say, while we're looking at July, you can see there's a lot of stuff that's coming along. But when you go ahead and you go look at October, just absolutely amazing. One, two, three, uh, four more buildings at least for us to, uh, to take a closer look at. So what am I going to do next? Well, I am going to select October, and then I'm going to go over to Layers. I'm going to highlight the layer, and I'm going to drag that onto the July and just plop it down there. So now we've got two layers here, and if we look at the Layers tab, we have October on top, we have July down on the bottom there. So I am just going to, number one, I'm going to move that for a sec. I'm actually going to highlight both. You see these are now highlighted, both layers. After highlighting the layers, I'm going to go up into Edit, and I am going to go down to Auto Align the Layers. So Photoshop's going to line this up for me if there's, you know, just a little bit of uh, things not being perfect. Now we've got October, and if I click that off, there's July, and we can see some massive changes. I'm going to actually zoom down in here just a bit. Oh, I can't zoom too much because then I lose my um, my layers over here. But if I turn October off now, look at that. So no houses yet. And then if I click October back on, that has overlaid the July uh, layer. So. We can absolutely, in presentations, show this to clients, so we can show them just the before and after in Photoshop, or you could use something like Affinity Photo as well. Uh, any photo programs that uh, allow for aligning the layers will be fine and needs to be able to uh, have layers as well. So Affinity Photo, I've done this before, and it works well. Now what I could do next is I could reduce the size of this and then export a smaller JPEG, and the JPEGs would then go into my custom uh, WordPress pages for my clients. So we want to shrink this down a good bit because, you know, what was it, 149 megs? That's just way too big. But so I went through this with our Patreon member and uh, he's got the whole idea for this. So he was going to go out and start flying this location on a regular basis. And he does have a custom flight setup that he did with an autonomous flight app. And to, you know, really get the best out of these, you do want to be using flight apps for planning and processing as well if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and quit Photoshop here. I'm not going to save those right now. We could also give the clients these TIFF files. So the clients are welcome to have the TIFF files. It's just they're very large, so we don't want it as part of a presentation. But if they just want the TIFF standalone, um, that is perfectly fine. So there we go. All right, I'm going to close this down. And before we actually head off here, I just wanted to quick overview for those of you not familiar with WebODM. Um, it is an open source uh, drone mapping application. Um, and it's got the lowest price point out there. So if you're getting into uh, doing 2D maps and 3D models and you're just breaking into it, and you don't want to spend a bunch of money on subscriptions or standalone platforms that cost thousands of dollars to, to uh, put on your desktops and laptops, um, WebODM is a nice starting point for you. And once again, classes.azdrone.net, and you can check out some of the previews that we've got up there for the WebODM course. So before we're out of here, I thought it would be fun to actually take a look at the map really quick. So. We're, this is utilizing WebODM still, and I'm going to go over to the right-hand side. I'm just going to turn off that Google Hybrid map there. So now we're just looking at what we have done um, 
with our processing. So we can go through, you know, they've got plant health, but it's not really legit on my Mavic 3 Enterprise. Um, we do have the surface model available as well. Uh, there are options for doing measurements, but you know, you have to have an extremely accurate system. You'd be uh, looking at an RTK setup most likely. We're flying a Mavic 3 Enterprise. We don't have an RTK setup yet because the, none of our clients have asked us for um, for that level of precision. When when someone comes along and does want one, we do know how to do it, so we'll buy it at that time. Um, don't overspend if this is a new business for you. I'm clicking into the 3D model really quick because I thought you would also enjoy actually seeing the point cloud. So we're coming down in and we can actually see all of these points in here um, for the point cloud. Uh, I am not the biggest fan of the 3D modeling side of web ODM, but in a pinch, if you need to provide something, there are ways to export um, and get it shared online with your clients. So there we go. Um, there are also options to do the textured model. Um, one of the, we can change the appearance as well on the, on the point budget. Um, this means more processing. And also you can show the cameras in here. And if I zoom in, you'll see these little blue blocks. Those are locations that the drone was at um, for its flight to collect the 210 images that we did. So all right, let's head on back to dashboard. And just to wrap it up, um, Web ODM is actually pretty powerful, especially for the price point of basically free or 50 bucks for the installer, I believe. Um, while it's not as powerful as things like Pix4D, Drone Deploy, Metashape, and you know several other processing, uh, cloud processing solutions, um, those get really expensive really quickly. And if you're just breaking into the business and you're just practicing um, doing some of your 2D and 3D flights, Think about WebODM for sure. I don't work for them, but um, you know I found that the uh, that the application is pretty robust for what it costs and what it does. All right, everybody. Um, if you have any further questions or anything, go ahead and uh, message us down in the comments below. And uh, if you'd like to see more on WebODM, let us know as well. We'll see you again in the near future, everybody.